Hello, welcome everyone to episode nine of the Higher Well Recruitment Insights podcast slash LinkedIn Live. I'm your host as always, James Hornick, partner at Hirewell, and I have a very special guest today. This is a follow-up topic from probably two months back, is how long we've been talking. Um, so Colleen Curtis uh, from The Mom Project, she is the head of marketing and community. That's right. So Hi. welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So what we're talking about today is returnships. And what I thought was interesting about this topic is I had no idea what returnships were two months ago, maybe it was three yeah. months ago. So our, at Hirewell, we were doing, a, I think, a, a bunch of content pieces on alternative ways or so less, not alternative, but less known ways of um, fulfilling your talent needs. Yeah. I think a lot of the market is obsessed with we need to find that three to five year person, perm hire, and there's a lot of other ways of filling positions. And we had, um, we did a kind of a segment on internships, but uh, we, we started talking about returnships, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I had no idea that was a thing. Yeah. And it makes a lot of sense. So, But I, I want you to kind of do most yeah. of the talking today, frankly, because this is your kind of expertise. Sure. But um, what's the goal, or so what's the what's the mission of the MOM Project? Yep. And can you tell us what's the definition of returnships and yeah, what that sure. looks like? So I'll start with the MOM Project, um, a digital talent marketplace that is connecting women with highly rewarding work opportunities at great companies, right? So there was a pain point, you know, wouldn't it be great if we could build a future where women didn't have to choose between being a great parent and thriving in your career? Um, and so uh, Allison Robinson founded the Mom Project in 2016 to solve that very problem. Um, so the natural progression for the Mom Project to design and implement returnships um, was a really natural fit. And so everyone knows what an internship is, and that's when mm. you're coming out of college, you don't have any experience, and you're ultimately getting a, a foot in the door at a company for a very specific amount of time, whether it's a summer or semester. Um, and you're leaving with connections and great experience to kind of go on to your next um, your next venture. And so returnships have um, a similar purpose for a company in that you're fulfilling potentially a short-term project, um, but ultimately you're tapping into this talent base that has you know stepped out for a variety of reasons: caregiving, childcare, um, the birth of children, and allowing them a ramp back into the workforce. And so we've seen companies be extremely successful by by dialing back into this talent base who's been, you know, dormant for a couple of years. And it's really a win on both sides. Yeah. I mean I see this, you know, kind of in recruiting all the time. Like I've always taken the mantra that I, I like helping everybody and I can't place everyone per se, but if there's any way I can make an intro or whatnot to help somebody out. But yeah. I've I've over the years like talked with countless people who are in that position. Um, and it can be tough for for some people to kind of get back into it. So I'm glad and, and I, I was excited to have you guys on or have you on too because I know um, I think in our industry recruiting talent acquisition and whatnot, we there needs to be more innovation and thought leadership. And that's why I really appreciate companies that are doing something that's a little little different than the norm. So I, I, was, I was glad we could kind of have this conversation. Yeah. Um, I guess getting, uh, so what, in terms of like companies you're talking to, um, what sorts of people are, what sorts of companies are embracing this? Yeah, so our, our flagship returnship company is BP. Um, I've had tremendous success working with them on their program. They're in their third wave of commitments. And so even just last week, we had four um, mid-level oil and gas engineers start as a cohort. Um, in Houston, um, and just an incredible commitment by P by BP to bring in um, these women who you know are extremely talented and, and, and in some cases very niche experience. Right. Um, what's been interesting about the BP program is it started out by scoping these you know kind of longer term projects like six mm -hmm. to nine months um, full time to bring them back into the company. What they found was that the offer rate to bring them on full time after that. Um, Returnship was so high that they've started scoping those as per more permanent roles so that they can roll right into them. Sure. Um, because they were finding the talent was so incredible. Yeah. Um, and it, it's incredible for the women because they then have this network that they're working with. You know, they've been able to prove that, you know, that gap in their resume, you know, really shouldn't hold them back because the, the yeah. work speaks for itself. Exactly. Is there, um, what, I guess, with BP or, or with any other companies, what's the ones who have decided to embrace these programs, what's what's been behind their decision, do you think, or why they decided to do it? Yeah, so I think it's a couple things. Um, really needing to build this pipeline of, of early um, 
of early talent, right? So being able to foresee where they're going to have gaps in in some of their workforce strategy and be able to fill that with returnships. Um, And then also how they're retaining kind of women and working parents at large. This shows Mm -hmm. a returnship program and an investment in a returnship program really does show the whole organization how much they're caring about these specific segments of the workforce. Um, and so it really shows this this commitment. Okay. Um, and so we're finding it's, it's not only a talent pipeline thing, which yeah. it is, right? You're getting great, incredible talents through this pipeline. You know, they're potentially staying with you, but you're also able to retain at scale within your organization. Okay. Um, are there any types of positions that are most common? Is it pretty broad based? Um, or is there things that you see are more popular for these types of roles, I guess? Yeah, it's pretty broad-based, actually. So with BP, for example, we've worked now across several of their business units. Um, so we're seeing you know, all different kinds, like I mentioned, oil and gas engineers, but we've put people into their pipelines business. Um, we've done communication strategy. So it's really just depends on where the needs are across the business. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the program is really set up to to fundamentally support the re-entry. And so that means that any anyone coming into this re-entry or re- returnship program is able to be supported through that process as opposed to being just kind of slotted into some, you know, random slot that someone doesn't know about, so. Okay. Have there been um, any companies you've talked to, off the record, not naming any <laughs> companies, but have been hesitant? Or have there been any places that kind of waffled on or balked at it? Or I'm just kind of curious, yeah. not negative feedback, but what no, holds some companies back? I think that's true. I mean, I think, at the surface level, going back to what we talked about, the value prop of what returnships can bring to a company, I think the hesitation is less around, oh, I don't know if I want return to work candidates, and it's more around, can we do this thoughtfully and intentionally and carry it through? Because it does require you know, an intentional focus to mm-hmm. make sure that, that each of those candidates is successful. And so we, I think that's more of what we see on the hesitation or the yeah. objection to a returnship is more about, do we have a, an, an executive sponsor who's really going to drive this? Do we have key stakeholders that are going to ensure that that this gets you know pulled through? And mm-hmm. you know one of the the great examples we have from BP is that you know they have this internal stakeholder who was just truly passionate about this being successful, um, and because of that, we're seeing such great returns for them. Um, so I think some companies it's just finding that right mix of who's going to really own it and drive it internally, um, and and then that that starts to become less of an objection. So. What challenge, no, switching things over yeah. to kind of the more of the candidate side, um, what challenges do you see for, I mean, obviously it is a challenge for people kind of getting back in the work of it now, but in terms of finding these programs, or is there anything, how do you locate the talent, you know, mm-hmm. if you have advice for those, for people who are trying to get into these types of things, yeah. what would it be? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, right, there's no shortage of, of issues on the candidate side of getting back into the workforce if you've mm-hmm. taken a step out, right? So we're seeing, um, because the labor market is tighter and, um, Companies are having to look in different spots for mm-hmm. um, for sort of this untapped talent. Um, that's been a great force for getting, you know, these caregivers back into jobs. Returnships formalize that and create a little bit better of an on-ramp. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now that returnship is a pretty well-used term, so even just searching for returnships, like, mm-hmm. for example, it's not a company we work with, but Johnson & Johnson has a really um, powerful returnship program that they run internally. Um, it's really vetting for those programs. I will say, like, there are far more return-to-work candidates who are highly qualified and incredibly talented yeah. than there are mm-hmm. returnship slots right now. Um, and so that's what we've been really trying to formalize more of these programs because we know that um, we have such a great base to fill those yeah. roles with. So Okay. Um, I think I asked you that. I had three questions and you kind of answered them all at once because I was, <laughs> didn't quite plan that out correctly. So um, is there anything else you want, I guess, if, um, if if people are interested in this type of stuff, yeah. like uh, reach out to you or is there, who's the, who's the contact person? Yeah, I mean, we, uh, <laughs> yeah. just reach out to me personally. Um, uh, we, yeah, find us on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, we're we're at, we're very um, visible on LinkedIn, um, and also um, can email us at talent at the mom project. Um, where I think it becomes highly visible is as we bring on these returnship partners, 
um, all of those jobs will hit our platform, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll, they're very specific about returnship or return to work candidates. Yeah. Um, so for example, we're running Women's Work Initiative right now, um, looking at placing you know return to work candidates with some of these companies that we've just brought on. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, in Atlanta, we work with Georgia Pacific and Besco um, to really place some of these um, into these, not specific returnship, but return to work. So yeah. if you are someone who's out there, and it can be a very daunting thing to step out of the workforce, somewhat lose your network, um, lose your footing a little bit and how, you know, to navigate how to get your next job. I mean, that's mm -hmm. even hard when you don't leave the workforce, yeah, frankly. Yeah. Um, so to, um, to really kind of put yourself in a place where you're being notified of these, these opportunities as they come up, I think is a powerful position to be in. Um, and just being really confident that, you know, we like to say you're not starting from scratch, you're starting from experience. And so it can be yeah. hard when you feel like you're starting over. You're not really starting over. Yeah. You're, you know, you're just, you're, you've spent time contributing to your family and now it's time to, you know, step back in. And so that ultimately it, it can feel very uh, daunting, but that there are more and more opportunities coming online. Okay. Um, lastly, I kind of want to give a shout out to the companies I could find that do this. There's not a lot, but just doing a basic Google search and some people on LinkedIn were like filling me some. So BP is someone you work yep. with. You mentioned Johnson & Johnson. Um, IBM has a program for this. Navigant Consulting, Omnicom Health, The Workday, Morningstar, Goldman Sachs, Baxter, and Medtronic. And there's probably a lot more. So if there's some on this list that I didn't mention, just put it in comments or something like that. But I wanted to do everyone a solid who has these programs. So if you, those of you out there who are trying to find something like this, those are some of the companies you can kind of approach. So yeah. um, anything else you want to talk about today? <laughs> I, I love talking internship. So yeah, um, yeah it's it's been just incredible to see the the appetite for it, right? I mm -hmm. think a couple of years ago this was not as big of a no, thing. No, so. I, like I said, I didn't yeah. even know it was a and thing until in, three you know three months ago. So yeah, years, right? so. And now I know who to point people to yeah. when they ask for this Please kind of stuff. Them. So yeah, <laughs> so. we want to take care of everyone. So. All right, guys, uh, I think that's pretty much all for this week. So again, thanks for listening to the Hire Well Recruitment Insights podcast. If you like what you heard. Um, and want more insights from our recruiting experts, visit hirewall.com slash recruiting dash insights. Remember to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. I love the scripted portion of these. Um, <laughs> but that's all we got for today. And see you guys soon.